Hi everybody, it's Dave here from Rose to Freedom. I uh, just wanted to talk today a little bit about uh, riding a faster 5k and uh, zooming in a little bit more on uh, the question of how to build an aerobic base. Uh, so very important to build an aerobic base uh, before we try to add any extra speed into our training. Um, why do you need a good aerobic base? Uh, many reasons. You need uh, to build endurance in all the relevant muscle groups. You need to develop these slow twitch muscle fibres, which are the endurance fibres. You need to improve your running economy and efficiency. And uh, this uh, aerobic base will also give you more mitochondria in the cells these are the um these are the uh powerhouse uh parts of the cell really um you need to uh ensure a more efficient supply of oxygen and blood so the stroke volume uh is increased your cardiac output is increased uh as you do this kind of base training uh, you develop a better immune system by doing this kind of uh, low intensity aerobic work and you also develop the mental uh, abilities, the patience to, to, to do endurance events and just keep going. Um, what time of year would you do your aerobic based training? Well ideally it's done out of season uh, so the winter months would be best for this normally so November, December, January, February. Um, although it uh, may well be beneficial to incorporate periods of this uh, within the main season as well, and also in between uh, session, uh, in between periods of racing, you may wish to go back to this uh, to, to to rebuild your aerobic base. So how much uh, low intensity aerobic base training should you do? Well, first advice would be to think not about uh, distances or speeds, but simply thinking about time spent on your feet uh, and gradually increase the duration and the frequency of the runs rather than uh, try to improve on distances or speeds. So how, how do you go about uh, knowing the right kind of intensity for these kind of workouts? Well, it's going to be very low intensity. It's going to be probably 65 to 70 percent of maximum heart rate to is the ideal zone for developing um, all the things that we talked about um, all the benefits of the um, training the aerobic system as opposed to the anaerobic system. So you want to perhaps use uh, a heart rate monitor, so a heart rate monitor with a chest strap, uh, make sure it's a reliable one like uh, Garmin or Polar are the two most reliable, accurate um, heart rate monitors. So make sure it's got a chest strap because you won't be able to pick up an accurate reading from your wrist. Uh, you one of the best methods I've found for gauging the right intensity is to use the Maffetone method, which was developed by a guy called Philip Maffetone in the US, who was a GP and also a running coach. And he trained uh, Mark Allen to six successive uh, World Ironman Championship victories using these methods and actually without doing any speed training whatsoever. So it is possible to get great results just by developing your aerobic system. And this makes sense for the longer distance events because uh, if you look at uh, marathon, it's 99% aerobic, only 1% anaerobic. And half marathon is 2% aerobic, 98% uh, 98 aerobic, 2% anaerobic. And even a 5K is, as we said yesterday, is 88% approximately aerobic and only 12% uh, anaerobic. So, so why would you spend hours and hours developing your uh, anaerobic system uh, before uh, thinking about uh, developing a good aerobic base? Doesn't make sense, does it really? 
So uh, the Maffetone method essentially is to take away your age from 180 um, and that's kind of the maximum heart rate that you should be aiming to maintain and uh, anything from 10 beats below that makes sense. So if you're 40 years old for example by the Maffetone formula you would be, uh, you'd be working at 140 being your maximum uh, aerobic um, intensity down to 130 beats uh, for uh, the bottom end of that scale so you'd keep all your training within that zone uh, there is provision within the Maffetone formula to um, add or subtract various small amounts depending upon your experience your fitness level whether you've been injured or ill etc um, and we look at the Maffetone method, method in a bit more detail in a future video uh, but uh, this is a good uh, basic method for, for establishing your aerobic uh, training zone. You will require quite a lot of patience when you first uh, attempt this kind of training because most people, even experienced runners, especially experienced runners perhaps, uh, they're uh, most of, most of their training has been done at far too high an intensity, uh, so their their anaerobic system is probably better developed than their aerobic system, and that's kind of the wrong way around, really, for a distance runner. Um, so um, you will require patience because at first your heart rate will tend to go much too high, uh, you'll be well out of the zone, and you'll end up having to walk to stay within the zone. And a lot of people don't like this. They get impatient with the system, but if you stick with it, you will find that you're able to run at quite high speeds um, while still maintaining this low aerobic heart rate, and that's the goal. That's kind of the the, the aim of uh, this uh, establishing this aerobic base to be able to go harder and longer with essentially less uh, effort. So other factors that also interfere with your aerobic fitness base. So things like hydration and nutrition. Okay, so if you're eating lots of processed carbohydrates, you will find that that adversely affects your aerobic fitness. Real food is recommended. Um, so high in natural fats, high diet, high in natural fats, low in processed carbohydrates will be your best option for maintaining good health and aerobic fitness. Uh, stay well hydrated, get plenty of sleep because stress, uh, lack of sleep will also affect your aerobic fitness. Um, make sure you get enough recovery um, and the, one of the benefits of this way of training is that it is not stressful on the system. It's very relaxed, easy pace running should be able to hold a conversation quite easily and if and if you're you know in any way struggling for breath then you're working way above your aerobic zone and not getting the benefits you want illness will also affect this illness and injury so uh, if you've got a cold or something you'll find your heart rate goes outside the zone quite quickly so uh, main advantages of this system apart from you know providing a really good foundation for future training uh, and particularly for speed work is that it's a healthy way of training you're developing your immune system you're encouraging your body to burn fat for fuel uh, and you will encourage fat loss as well uh, so so all of those things are, are, are good obviously um, the disadvantage as I said before you need patience you need a lot of patience you need to be a very well disciplined runner uh, the it feels like it's just too easy to be effective or useful and that's how a lot of people report it initially uh, they don't stick with it they lose patience they get fed up with walking and they feel like they're not working hard enough so so that's what you've got to be wary of um, but uh, most elite runners actually spend most of their training time working in this zone. 
They don't spend much time working those in-between zones where most runners are running most of the time, which is just like yeah, 75 to 90 percent of maximum heart rate. So elite runners spending at least at least 80 percent normally of their time and training within the aerobic zone. It's just that they can run a lot faster than you within that zone. Uh, and, um, and the other training they do tends to be a very high quality, very specific um, anaerobic training and they don't overdo it in most cases to, to be successful. Um, and then the other thing is uh, even during you know, race season it's still useful to do most of your training in this zone so when you're not going hard you want to be going easy you don't want to be spending lots of time in that middle zone where you're neither getting the benefits of developing an aerobic system nor are you really working hard enough to improve at the high end so all in all, that's kind of my summary of how to build uh, an aerobic base. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to talk about your training further or want to find out more about the Running Gym program at Rose to Freedom, then uh, please just uh, get in touch. Um, and uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, please like my video. So, Goodbye for today from Dave at Rose Freedom.